We talk a lot about pesticide alternatives and safety here on Oklahoma Gardening, but there's one area that seems to be uh, misused a little bit still, and that's protective clothing. Now, I know not everyone can afford what the official attire should be, and, and that would really be like some disposable clothing. Like here we have uh, an all-purpose um, overalls that they're disposable, they're made out of Tyvek. Some of them you can use several times. There's aprons that can be worn, gloves. I mean, there's all kinds of things that are recommended. But in most home situations, we know that it's a little bit different. And I'd like to give you some pointers to really re-emphasize the safety aspect. First of all, when you're spraying, you shouldn't be wearing t-shirts and shorts like I have on today. You should wear long pants, long sleeve shirts, and the long pants should cover the outside of your boots and the long sleeve shirt should go in the gloves and you should tuck your shirt tail in. And then you need to wear a uh, protective uh, covering on your feet and usually you want to use rubber boots that don't have any seams in them where you won't have any pesticide absorbed in them. You should also wear gloves and the gloves should be uh, recommended or labeled for use of pesticide because we have some various types here. These are all recommended for pesticide application bought specifically from mail order or chemical companies. But like the latex gloves in your home and some of the other types of gloves, you have to be really careful even though they look similar. We know these are approved for pesticide use. And then you would want to use a face shield or goggles or even a respirator depending upon what you're going to apply and those are very important and one thing that a lot of homeowners do is use a dust mask and that's okay if you're putting on dust but if you're spraying a liquid or emulsifiable or a wettable concentrate this won't work the liquid will go through the dust mask so you need to choose the appropriate clothing and that's the basic things that you need to do now one thing that we don't think about sometimes is the types of other articles on us when we're spraying. For example, you wouldn't want to use tennis shoes or wear canvas type uh, boots because that can absorb the uh, pesticide. Even leather boots can absorb it and you can't wash them or clean them. You want to be careful not to wear hats that would absorb pesticides that you can't wash. Even watch bands that are leather. Uh, bandanas, things like that that you may be using in the garden all the time. If you can't wash them and reuse them, then you need to leave them off when you're spraying. Now the care of the contaminated clothing is the next step that most of us don't even think about. We just think if they go in the laundry, they're going to be clean. And there's some real important things you need to consider and keep in mind. First of all, when you're through spraying, wash off the gloves and the boots first of all. And with them being rubber, that's easy to do. Then change out of your clothes immediately after you're spraying and take a shower first thing and use lots of soap and, and wash your hair and even clean out from under your fingernails because of any residue that may have gotten under your fingernails. Then the next thing is to make sure the person in charge of the laundry knows that these clothes have been worn for pesticide application and they should wear uh, plastic gloves or rubber gloves to handle the laundry when they're doing it and these that are uh, labeled for pesticide use would be fine to, to use. It's best if they could hang the contaminated clothing outside on the line and wash it off or hose it down with the water hose and pre-rinse it outside. That way the sun and the air will help evaporate some more of those chemicals. But if you can't do that and you have to store them for a few hours or days before you wash them, put them in a clothes bag separate and it should be a plastic clothes sack and just keep them separate until you can launder them. Don't mix them in with your other clothes. And then if you can't pre-rinse them again outside, you do need to pre-rinse them in the washing machine again separate. Now, when you're washing pesticide contaminated clothes, you should always wash them separate as well. And when you wash, there's some things you need to keep in mind. The temperature of the water should always be very hot to 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Even the rinse water should be as warm as possible. If you have just a pair of pants and a shirt and that's all you're washing, go ahead and fill the tub in the washing machine to the maximum capacity. That way you get more water to dilute it down. Don't skimp on your laundry detergent. Uh, if you're using pesticides that are like emulsifiable concentrates or liquids, your heavy duty detergents will work fine. But if you're using wettable powders or something that can uh, absorb into the clothes and crust over a little bit more, it's recommended that you use high phosphates. And again, 
use the full amount of laundry detergent, don't skip. You want to avoid using bleach or ammonia because that can react to form a chlorine gas, which can be harmful. And wash the entire so, uh, cycle on your washing machine. Don't use the energy saver or the short cycles. If you're using a water repellent like Scotchgard on your jeans or whatever before you spray, you need to use one and a quarter times the amount of recommended detergent because of the way it's attached to your clothing. And one study out of Nebraska even recommended using a fabric starch on your clothes before you spray, and that will act as a protectant, and the chemicals will adhere to the starch and wash out a lot easier. Now, we talked earlier in the season about how pesticides have caution, warning, and danger on the label. Note the pesticides being used and what the label says. If it's caution, you need to wash those clothes at least two times. If it's warning, two to three times, and if it's danger or poison with the cross and skull, you need to dis discard those clothes, not even reuse them because it's really hard to get them clean. And that's when you need to invest in this type of protective clothing if you're spraying those types of pesticides. Once they're cleaned, you need to line dry them only. Uh, there's not any recommendations whatsoever to put them in the dryer because the heat can contaminate the dryer, so always line dry. Now there's an example of a gentleman who actually uh, died from this type of practice, so it's something you want to take seriously. He was spraying his fruit orchard on a windy day and he got his clothes contaminated. And that evening he went ahead and had dinner in those clothes and relaxed in the living room, then went to bed, got sick. Everything was okay, they took him to the doctor, but two weeks later he wore those same clothes that had already been laundered all day working, came ill again and died and they tested the clothes and found that they weren't cleaned properly and there were still high residues of pesticide in his clothing. So it's something, even if you're a homeowner using either organic, natural products that are still very toxic at the concentration stage, you need to wear protective clothing. And if you'd like more information, you can get information from your extension office and these are shared with us through the College of uh, Human Environmental Sciences and it's uh, Dress Out Pesticides L1601 and Caution Pesticides in the Laundry which is L1602 and Jan Park the Extension Specialist in Clothing has shared some of this information and some research from Nebraska too so take it seriously and read the label and do your proper uh, pesticide safety anytime you're wearing the clothes and applying pesticides.